Pete Prisco, who writes about the NFL for CBS, ranked the top 100 players in the league. And nine of them were on the 49ers. That's a league. That's a NFL tops. Figured I would go through and give you the rankings for each player and see if you think it's too high, too low, or just right. Okay. So, top rated 49er on the list, Trent Williams. Number one player in the league, Patrick Mahomes. Number two player in the league, Miles Garrett. Number three, Trent Williams. Pete Prisco says at the age of 36, he remains the game's best left tackle. He is the key to their run game, but he also excels in pass protection. The only concern is when does he start to show his age? Last season, he was number 10. He somehow went up to number three. He is ranked ahead of TJ Watt, Tyreek Hill, Josh Allen, Justin Jefferson. What do you think? Three? Three. I think that may be a little too high. Um, it's almost 36. And the consistency, Trent doesn't even finish whole seasons. Yeah, um, he plays about 14, 15 games a year. Yeah. Uh, That's a good point. For what it's, I mean, for what it's worth, Trent is one of one. Um, and I do feel like the game is kind of like falling graciously into his skill set. Um, he really doesn't see um, a lot of players his size, honestly. Um, as far as like, and and not even like his size, because he's not like a physically imposing guy. Like Trent is only six four, but I feel like just the style of play that we, in which he has to, what he has to do on a daily basis, it's falling really good on um, his age. I don't want to. I mean, three is three is three is too high because you're only thinking about literally two players that are better than Trent Williams. Um, does he tip the scales like that? At number three overall, I don't know. But then at the really same rather time, have Trent Williams than Josh Patrick Allen. Patrick Moe. Yeah, Josh Allen. Like, really? I I take Josh Allen over Trent Williams. I would too. Would. would you rather have Trent Williams than Justin Jefferson? No, I take Justin Jefferson over Trent Williams. Because would you rather have Trent not, Williams than TJ Watt? We're not now, mind you. Hold on, hold on. Trent Williams today. Not prime Trent Williams. Prime Trent Williams. Trent Williams today, believe. yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that today. Okay, so that seems a little rich. Number eight on the list overall is Christian McCaffrey. That's one spot ahead of Micah Parsons. Uh, Pete Prisco writes, he is the game's best back, a dual threat player who can kill a defense with his ability to run it and catch it. He is the prototypical back for today's game, and he gets paid like it. He's also ranked ahead of Nick Bosa, Max Crosby, Sauce Gardner, Jamar Chase, Chris Jones, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Travis Kelsey, Aaron Rodgers. What do you think of that? I agree with that. Okay. Um, from where Christian is you for what he's used, how often he's used, um, the clip um at like I think he this is the most this is the most reps he's ever had from line of scrimmage in his entire career since last year. Um, he's pretty much at the top of his peak. I don't think he's, I don't think he can get better, uh, as far as um, what he's asked to do from Kyle's standpoint. And, uh, one thing that I will say about <clears throat> Christian that's synonymous, synonymous with Trent as well, is that they've done it in multiple franchises. So Trent was Trent in Washington, right? And then he came over here and married the same exact skill set over here and took off here with the Niners. And it was, you know, hand in glove, the same exact thing happened with CMC. Like most guys, when they come, when they go to different squads and they're kind of like the guy over there, you can come to another squad where you're kind of asked to play along with other talented players. And it really doesn't really hit for you. You know, like look at OBJ. I don't necessarily think OBJ's career necessarily, I think his career kind of plateaued once he had to play with, once he had to start playing with Jarvis Landry. He had to start playing with other good receivers, right? And it was kind of like, all right, well, you you're not you're not just the guy anymore. You got to fight for reps. Uh, Christian came over here and immediately was the guy on a very talented team, and nobody questioned what his utilization was going to be for the team. As a matter of fact, the entire offense kind of shifted to it being all about 
Christian getting the ball as many times as possible. So I like the, I like my, the position. My only issue with the ranking isn't necessarily where, where McCaffrey is. It's, I feel like Prisco has kind of uh, ranked the quarterbacks really low. Like McCaffrey's a better player overall than all but two quarterbacks in the league. I don't know about that. Like I, I think I'd rather have Lamar Jackson than Christian McCaffrey. No disrespect to Christian. And that's just where it's a theme with Prisco's uh, rankings. You're going to see Purdy comes in pretty low. A um, lot of the quarterbacks come in low. But the next one, 22, Fred Warner. This is what he says about Fred. Remains the game's best inside linebacker, a true off-the-ball star. He can run and cover and play the run. The only issues are when he isn't as protected and big linemen get out on him in the run game. Last season, he was number 37. What do you think of 22 for Fred Warner? Excuse me, I passed Nick Bosa. Why don't we do Nick Bosa first? Number 10. His sack number fell from 8.5, 18.5 in 2022 to 10.5 last season as he wasn't as dominant as he was the year before. He had just one double-digit sack game last season after having four in 2022 last season, number four. What do you think of number 10 for Bosa? Mm, I think that may be a little too high for mm, Nick I at agree. 10. Yeah. Uh, a Max Crosby, we, Sauce Gardner, I don't know. Chris Jones, is he really better than Chris Jones? I don't know, man. I don't know if he's better. I mean, is, yeah. Like, would you take Nick Bosa over Lamar Jackson? No. Over Joe, over Joe Burrow? No. no. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, but, but, but. I'm not even I, sure I'd take him over Panay Sewell. Really? Nah, I'd take I Nick think Bosa Panay Sewell could do a really good job against Bosa one-on-one. But I don't know. Didn't they face each other in 2021? I thought Penesul did a great job against him. Maybe, maybe that that was a while ago though. Maybe I'm misremembering. Respect. Yeah. Um, but he may be a little too high, but I, I think that too high is from a standpoint of like no less than 15. I think That's any, fair. I think Nick Bosa being anywhere outside of 15 is you're you're getting in disrespect territory. I think that's fair. Okay, so let's go back to Fred Warner. See, my thing, Fred Warner at 22, uh, Bosa at, at 10. You could argue that Fred Warner was the better player last year. Yeah, true. In fact, I think, he, he, I, he frankly, he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he you was. could. I mean, yeah. really right now, the way, the way Fred Warner is, the thing about Fred Warner is his consistency. Yeah. Um. He's he's never been hurt, right? And he, I mean, as far as being hurt, I mean, how many games has Fred missed in his career? Maybe two. One. One. Yeah. One. If that. So, uh, he's the leader of the defense. He is the constant over all of the changes from D'Amico Ryan's to Robert Sala to uh, Coach Wilkes now into um Coach Sorensen. He seems to be the actual real defensive coordinator on the on the on the team. Um and one thing that I can't say about Fred is that he does carry the culture very well. As far as who he is persona wise, um, he is one of the best one of the best leaders in the NFL, not just the 49ers. So I think that he's adequately placed at 22. And you can argue for him to be for. I mean, I wouldn't be mad if you swapped him and um, him and Nick Bosa. Honestly, yeah. I mean, I think you could argue they both are top 20 players in the NFL, mm-hmm. and that maybe Warner's a little too low. Mm -hmm. Um, No one takes away the middle of the field and coverage like he does. All right, next highest paid player, uh, highest ranked player in the Niners. It's Kittle. And I think that's, I don't know. I mean, I'll tell you how I feel after I hear how you feel. Uh, Last season, he was 32. This season, 37. Prisco writes, he continued to be one of the league's best combo tight ends. He is a dominant blocker as the Niners went to the Super Bowl last season. He had 65 catches, but he averaged 15.7 per catch the best of his career. Uh, he's ranked one head of spot of CJ Stroud, two uh, two ahead of Amon Ross St. Brown, four ahead of Justin Herbert. Like, wow. Um, what do you think? I was about to defend him until I started seeing all of the people that he was ahead of. Um, I not to mention other teammates he's ahead of. True. Well, my thing for George is that he's incredibly useful. And not only is he useful in this offense, but he is the quintessential tight end. He does what tight ends are supposed to do at an elite level. 
right? Most tight ends in this, most tight ends that are going to be really good in the NFL, most of them are going to be tilted towards two things. They're going to be very athletic, right? Where they're going to be damn near move tight ends that detach and be receivers, glorified receivers, or they're going to be bigger traditional, traditional tight ends where you're going to be a little bit, uh, you're going to be ex- happy with what they give you in the past game, but you know, they're more of they're more of a surprise in the past game and what where they are blocking wise they're nowhere as good as what you would get out of an offensive lineman what i like about george is is that he blocks like an old lineman and he gives you receiver ability um at tight end now the reason why i believe that he should be at 37 and he's adequately placed is because we have been watching george get slower he's slowing down um, he's not as fast as he used to be. He's not as athletic as he used to be. As far as agility, agility is concerned, there used to be a time where you could watch George get to the top of his route and actually give you a move. Now, I mean, he's got foot in the ground at the top of his route, and it's hard for him to climb that stem. Um, and you could tell he's chugging. He's getting older. His legs are his legs aren't as snappy as they used to be. Um, and that's a far cry from what we used to see out of George in 2019 and 18, when he would just pop off the screen, like get the ball and just fly down this, down the field. Um, now you're getting more of a workman rep side of George, where you're just really, you're really happy that he's helping out Colton McKibbitts and pacing him along, giving us good blocking angles on the edge for Christian. And then also being a good pace horse for Brock. That's something that I will be willing, that I will be, looking at as the season progresses, particularly the off season, when we get into the preseason and training camp, I want to see if Brock still uses George the way he did previously before Ricky Persall and, and Isaac Howard got here because George used to be the benefactor of all of those short intermediate routes inside of the sticks, particularly in the red zone. But now with, we have more guys that pretty much are that skill set. I kind of want to, see where's George going to fit in in the passing game now, now that we have guys that they're fast. They don't necessarily take the top off, but um, I think he's adequately placed. I know you're giving me that look like you trailed off, Coach. This is not what we're talking about. What no, 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 no. I, I, I just don't, I don't think he's adequately placed. I think he's, I think this is a little bit, um, like, so I feel like some of these rankings are based on where a guy is right now and some of them are based on reputation. And this is a little bit race, based on reputation, like, yeah, he's still the second best tight end in the league, but I mean, he's always kind of hurt. And, and if you're like power ranking the Niners' weapons, is he really the second best one after McCaffrey? I mean, I think most people would say that number eleven is maybe a little bit better than eighty five, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people would say that nineteen is better than eighty five. Now, it's great that eighty five's a good tight end, but it's not even a more valuable position than wide receiver. So I don't know. Like, okay. So number 45, 37 is Kittle. Number 45 is our good friend. Number 11. That's kind of confusing. The guy from Arizona state 45. He had 75 catches with seven touchdowns, but his big playability was the key to the Niners passing game. He averaged 17.9 yards per catch, which was the best in the league for players with 70 or more catches. Last season, he was not ranked at all. He's ranked ahead of Justin Matabuki, Aiden Hutchinson, Creed Humphrey, Dak Prescott, Demario Davis, Lejarius Sneed. That's interesting to me because Lejarius Sneed kind of locked him up. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, 45 seems fair. Maybe Lejarius Sneed's getting uh, disrespected a little bit on that one. Uh, Well, I'm trying. Okay. But as I'm going lower, there's really nobody uh, below him that I would that I wouldn't that I would take above him. Frank Ragnow, Demarcus Lawrence, Christian Derisaw. These are good players too. Jalen, yeah. let's just let's let's do the hard ones. Would you take Jalen Hurts over the player? Not really. Right. I wouldn't either. Would you take Lane Johnson over the player? Probably not. And now I, he's a little older. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's only one guy, in my opinion, that I would probably take over the player. And Laramie Tunsil, I might take. Well, the guy that I would take is a teammate. Traverius Ward? Yep. See, that's interesting. Traverius Ward is ranked 60. 
And what they say here is, in his time with the Niners, he has developed into an outstanding cornerback who somehow doesn't get the due he deserves. He knows how to get the job done and plays the position with a feisty attitude that shows up on game days. Okay, he doesn't get the due he deserves, says the guy who ranks him 60. You could argue right. he should be ranked much higher than that. I mean, let's much look at higher. his numbers just from last year. His numbers right. last year were insane. He led the league with 23 PBUs. He also mm -hmm. had five picks. Um, and he gave up a passer rating of 64 when targeted. And he was like shadowing elite receivers around the field. I'm not sure how many corners actually were better than him last year. No, I'm telling you, Javarius Ward is a very underrated corner. And I'm a little disappointed in him because what really took his game to the next level is the tutelage that he was under with Coach Wilkes. Coach Wilkes really helped Javarius Ward calm himself down in longer routes, being able to stay poised and stay in phase, use the sideline as your friend, all of those good things. And we actually saw it during practice where they were having sidebar one-on-one -on -one sessions about that. And then he comes out and says he didn't help him at all. And like there was nothing that Coach Wilkes did to help out his uh, development. But – Outside of that, I do believe that uh, that Mooney is – I think Mooney's like top five corner in the league. I think he's a top five corner in the league. I think he's a top five player in the Niners. I think after, after um, Trent, CMC, Bosa, and Warner, you could argue that Traverse is the next best player. I yeah. mean, as good as number 11 is, when you watch him practice one-on-one -on -one in training camp, I would give the edge to Traverius. He's a little bigger. He's a little faster. He matches I, up really well. Put it like this. With, with number 11 out of the lineup, we still have many weapons on offense to be able to make things happen. If Mooney was not playing, our secondary is altered significantly. It's, it's no question. And he, he really is the best corner the Niners have had since I was a little kid. I mean, I know Richard Sherman was here, but he was older. And I feel like the one thing Richard Sherman did a really good job of was promoting himself, reminding people how good he is or, or just arguing uh, how good he is. Traverius Ward's a little bit more laid back. He's cool, but he's not out there being every, like, every week being like, I'm the best corner in the league. Yeah. If he did that, he might get more recognition um, mm -hmm. because I think corners are kind of expected to be like that. But you do a very good Traverius Ward impression. That's just not his style. It's not his style. Like, he's nah. just flipping. Like, he's really yeah. just... One thing about him is that he's one speed. You know, he's not going to get rushed up. It's almost kind of like the markings of a good corner. Not going to get sped yeah. up. He's going to stay he's on top so of the situation great. and understands when he needs to be able to respond. So, um Like, Legereus Sneed is ranked ahead of him. Is Legereus Sneed really better than Shavarius Ward? I don't know that. Uh, They're both really good. I might take Shavarius. Yeah, yeah. Like, is is Jalen Ramsey really better than Shavarius Ward at this stage? Jalen Rams, Jalen Ramsey's career? no. I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't. But he's think ranked so. ahead of him on this list. Where is he at? Isn't he? Uh... Jalen Ramsey is at 40, 43. Yeah. I mean, if Jalen Ramsey's forty three, you could argue Shavarius Ward should be forty two. Right. Jalen Johnson is thirty four. I'm sorry. I'm taking Shavarius Ward over Jalen Johnson. Yeah, yeah, Jalen you know Johnson. Jalen Johnson is 34. Jalen Johnson, let's put it like this. We were thinking about, like, not thinking about. There were reports that we were interested in Jalen Johnson mid-season last year. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Jalen Johnson would have came here. He would have been number two corner. Hell yeah. So <laughs> not exactly Jaylen getting his due. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like arguing on behalf of Trevarius. Next highest rated 49er. 81, Debo Samuel, writes Prisco. He's a pure football player who can do a lot of things for the Niners offense. His toughness is a big part of their identity. He had 60 catches with seven going for touchdowns and also rushed for five scores and 225 yards. Last season, he was ranked 57. So big fall for Debo. 12 fall. touchdowns is a lot. Uh, he was pretty much fourth on the Niners in catches and receiving yards, um, but still a big part of their offense. What do you think of uh, 81 for Debo? I think it's adequate. Yeah. I think it's adequate. Um, that's I can't pretty much with everybody else was higher or lower. I think he deserves to be right here at 81. Uh, 
he doesn't really have a chief responsibility as far as position is concerned, right? And yeah. I understand that he gets a lot of caveats because of it. So when Debo is not asked to run the full route tree, um, and Debo is he it is absolutely ridiculous for to ask Debo to be a running back. Um, so he gets in where he fits in, and quite honestly, Kyle does an amazing job at highlighting his skill set. Um, that's one thing I do um commend Kyle on with being able to make Debo look so well inside of the offense. Um, that's a skill that I don't think a lot of coaches have. Um, that's something that uh I worry for Debo in the future, where if he does move on from the 49ers, not every coach is going to know what to do with him and and be able to understand how to get the best out of him when they need to get the best out of him. Uh, but um, my thing with Debo is that he's a game breaker. He's somebody that can completely tilt an entire game with one play, but there's just no day-to-day skill set about Debo that I can depend on him every play. And, you know, for that, I think he's adequately placed at 81. Okay, last one. I agree with you on that. Brock Purdy, 85. He excels in the Niners offense, putting to rest any talk that he couldn't do it again after his rookie season in 2022, writes Prisco. He came back to throw 31 touchdown passes in 2023 and led the Niners to the Super Bowl. He's a he is perfect for what they do on offense, and he averaged 9.6 per pass attempt to lead the league. My question is: if you said all that, then why is he? The lowest strength of the 49ers. Do you, th- where, where, well, you didn't write it. What do you think? What do you think of uh, Purdy's placement? I like it. 85 is cool. You know, we all know that quarterbacks get, you can't judge quarterbacks year to year because we all understand that quarterbacks are like presidents, right? You come in, we got to judge you on your term. All right. You can have one good year, but things happen within a fiscal year. We got to be able to see if your your constituency is okay with all of the plans that you've put out that we're going to bear out over the course of the year. I feel that's the same over the course of a term. I feel that's a, I feel the same way about Brock, where you know right now Brock is doing an amazing job. He's been lights out. You can only really count at count on instances where he's been like bad. Um, outside of that, one one thing that I always say about Brock is he's the only quarterback that's been able to survive Kyle. Uh, Maybe Matt Ryan did. Uh, And he showed it this year, proof of concept with the Super Bowl. Um, But I feel like 85 is where he needs to be because we got to understand what Brock can do when he's truly the man, right? You can't call quarterbacks the man if you ain't getting the money. So when Brock gets paid and we see how this offense shapes around him when he's truly the man, you know, then we could start throwing Brock up in the 30s, the 20s, and see where he belongs, right? Because then it'll be his team. I hear what you're saying. To me, I just feel like Prisco's ranking is inconsistent because it's like you put Brock at 85. Cool, I can see that. But then you put right. CJ Stroud at 38, and he started fewer games than Brock. So I, that's mm-hmm. a huge difference. Then you got right. um, Dak at 49, Jalen Hurts at 53. Right. Uh, Trevor Lawrence at 62, two at 65, Jared Goff at 76. Like you could argue that Brock is as good or better than all of those guys. Um, so that's like where I feel like, you know, would, is, is Brock really not as good as George Kittle? Really? Is Brock not as good as Brandon Ayuk? Is Brock not as good as Debo? Really? I don't know. It's pretty freaking good. Yeah. Yeah. And he is a quarterback. He's a quarterback. Prisco treats quarterbacks like they're right like guards. His logic, his logic falls into why I said he was adequately placed because okay. of his teammates. And he placed yeah. all of his teammates ahead of him. Yeah. Yeah. Tua ahead of Brock? No. How did, like two was ahead of Brock. Like ooh. where? Two was like 65. 65? He's twenty he spots ahead of Brock. I can't. I can't go. With, I can't go for that. I can't go for that. No. No. He had an impressive 2023 season, throwing 29 touchdowns, passes, and averaging 8.3 yards per pass attempt. What? <laughs> you know, in those like TikTok videos or something happens, it's like. Tuk-tong! 
<laughs> what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. But he closes with. But he has to be better in the big games going forward to ease some of the questions about him. What is that? Like, like you talking out of both sides of your mouth, bro. <laughs> like, there's no way that Tua should be 65, bro. That's sacrilege. Over, over right. Brock? Nah, I don't see that. I, I mean, would you put Jalen Hurts over Brock? No. I, no, and he's 53. Would you put no. Dak over Brock? Maybe you put Dak no. over Brock just because he's done it for longer, but I yeah, mean, I mean the consistency, but yeah. Yeah. Even there. I feel like, I, I, you know, Brock's, if you're going to put CJ Stroud at 38, is over Brock. huh? George Pickens is over Brock. Right. Right. I just, I, did, Brock. I think Brock should be probably top 50. Yeah. He was an, I this think is a he little probably should be top 50. Yeah. Yeah. Montez Sweat got traded and he's ahead of Brock. <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't seem realistic. Devon Witherspoon. And he played one year. He's a rookie. Yeah. See? You see, I don't know, yeah, Prisco. The disrespect is wild. Yeah. Nico Collins? Didn't yeah, Coach hurt? had to read your words in, in weird voices. That's how he felt about it, what you wrote. Yeah. <laughs> so bad, bro.